Uh, good afternoon. Um, thank you to the moderators um, and um, Sages for the opportunity to present this interesting case. Uh, no financial disclosures, but I am discussing uh, off-label use of a medical device. On the patient's a 15-year-old male who um, in childhood had a um, history of laparoscopic nissen complication for GERD. Um, he had recurrence of his symptoms and underwent a revision at an outside hospital. Um, but uh, years after that, he had dysphagia. I um, mean, it was referred to us for consideration of uh, another revisional surgery. Um, past medical and surgical history was otherwise unremarkable. Um, Okay, thank you. Um, he underwent uh, preoperative testing, including upper GI and EGD, which showed um, posterior herniation of his rat. Um, he underwent motility studying that showed no evidence of an underlying motility disorder. Um, he was deemed an appropriate candidate for takedown of his Nissen, repair of a recurrent hiatal hernia, um, and implantation of a magnetic sphincter augmentation device um, to permit alleviation of his gas blood and permit a degree of belching. Um, so he began the operation with lysis of adhesions of the stomach to the underside of the left lobe of the liver. Um, the base of the right cruise is exposed. Um, Retrogastric uh, windows <clears throat> um, start to be revealed here um, as we continue to um, dissect out the esophagus. Um, at this point, the penrose is introduced. Um, we then turn attention to the gastrocolic and gastrosplenic ligaments, um, which we open and enter the lesser sac. Uh, we take down uh, short gastric and posterior gastric vessels I'm using electron, uh, <coughs> ultrasonic shears to further mobilize the stomach. Um, we open up the posterior peritoneal fold. Um, the previously placed Penrose drain is now retrieved and passed around the stomach, and uh, we will secure that with an endo loop to help with the retraction. Um, so we uh, retract the stomach to the left. Uh, we expose uh, some ethibon pexy sutures that in place at the prior operation, divide those. Um, we complete our external hiatal dissection um, and complete this circumferentially until the base of the left cruise is exposed. And again, you see uh, some sutures from the patient's prior operations. And here we're exposing a left cruise some more and carrying our dissection up into the medius sinum. Uh, next, we begin by uh, taking down the prior fund application. Um, because we're anticipating placement of a permanent <clears throat> device, uh, we um, choose not to use an endoscopic stapler. Um, to limit any potential contamination from entering the GI tract. So we continue using a short burst of electric cautery um, with monopolar energy um, to completely take down this rat. At this point, we uh, dissect the posterior vagus away from the esophagus and uh, attach new pen rows around the esophagus loin. Uh, once that's done, we perform a flexible upper endoscopy um, to uh, confirm the location of the GE junction being below the diaphragm and also make sure that we haven't inadvertently caused any mucosal injury to the esophagus. Uh, next, we uh, close the crura. Um, we do this uh, with two interrupted sutures of 30 silk um, for approximation. Um, we're careful not to cause any constriction of the esophagus or cause any angulation. Um, we don't have a bougie or anything in the esophagus at this point. Um, as you can see, the crural pillars appear uh, fairly robust. Um, there's no tension in the reapproximation. Um, don't feel any um, need to uh, do any sort of reinforcement or uh, any pledgements.
So once we've uh, closed Acura, um, we introduced a sizing device for the uh, magnetic sphincter augmentation device. Um, we performed the measurement with the esophagus and the stomach completely desuppilated. Um, we choose to go with the 14 bead device on this um, patient, um, slightly oversizing because um, he had had some issues with dysphagia prior. So at this point, our uh, device is secured. We inspect all surgical sites for hemostasis, and once we're uh, <clears throat> um, happy with that, we conclude the operation. So on post-op day one, um, the patient underwent an upper GI that showed no evidence of leak and no obstruction of the GE junction, um, no reflux, no delay and passage beyond the pylorus. The um, patient did well uh, initially with uh, regards to resolution of his uh, reflux symptoms and um, resolution of dysphagia, um, but sometime later he did develop some dysphagia to solids. Um, he responded, though, to endoscopic balloon dilatation, um, and he's had no recurrence of reflux symptoms since then. Um, so in conclusion, in patients with normal motility, fund application failure can be addressed with implantation of a magnetic sphincter augmentation device. Um, when post-op dysphagia occurs, this is manageable with endoscopic dilatation, um, similar to patients who undergo a primary fund application. Thank you, I welcome any questions.